Hello and thanks for joining us on TVC Midday News. We begin this hour with uh, President Buhari presenting a budget of 20.5 trillion naira to the National Assembly. This is the last uh, budget to be passed by the president before the end of his tenure next year. Before the president's speech, President of the Senate Ahmad Lawan commended President Buhari for being consistent in presenting the budget in the last three years. He also urged that the 2023 budget should focus on completing infrastructure already started, especially legacy projects. Senator Lawan described oil thieves as the worst enemy of Nigeria and offenders should be tried for treason. In his address, President Buhari assured that his administration is committed to ensuring lives and properties of citizens are safe. He also appealed to the Academic Staff Union of Universities to call off the strike as government alone cannot fund education. The president also assured that insecurity will be significantly curtailed before the end of his administration. So, President, the Ninth National Assembly has been consistent in passing the appropriation bill before the end of the year so that it can be signed into law before the beginning of the new year. The main source of revenue to the Nigerian government is oil and gas. We always consider the diversification of our economy as crucial, and it is indeed crucial. The idea of deploying our revenues from the oil and gas to support the diversification into real sectors like agriculture, manufacturing, mining, ETC is now under serious threat. Mr. President, we know the government drive to address the impact of climate change and reverse its effect. Though complicated and dynamic, we should not rest on our oars in dealing with issues like floods, drying wetlands, desertification, and coastline erosions. The menace of flooding in many parts of our country has been particularly worrisome. It has devastated homes and disrupted families, lives, and livelihoods. We we'll need to take proactive measures to tackle this and especially manage our dams and other water bodies to curtail the menace of flooding now becoming a national disaster. The amended 2022 budget was based on a benchmark oil price of 73 United States dollars per barrel, oil production of 1.60 million barrels per day, and exchange rate of 410.15 naira to United States dollar. As at 31st July 2022, federal government's retained revenue was 3.6 trillion naira, excluding the revenue of government-owned enterprises. Thus, revenue collection was only 63% of our target, largely due to the underperformance of oil and gas on Thursday, the House of Representatives adopted the recommendation of its Committee on Finance, which recommended 1.7 trillion naira for petroleum subsidy in 2023. National Assembly correspondent Jokadisa has details. The passage of the medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper by the two chambers of the National Assembly has now paved the way for the formal presentation of next year's budget. The report of the Finance Committee, presented by its deputy chairman, pegged daily crude oil production at 1.69 million barrels per day for 2023 and 1.83 million barrels per day each in 2024 and 2025. New borrowings proposed of 9.32 trillion, including foreign and domestic borrowing, Statutory transfers of 722.11 billion, proposed debt service of 6.31 trillion, sinking fund 247.73 billion. The 19.76 trillion Naira 2023 appropriation bill proposal has a total recurrent non debt of 8.53 trillion Naira, personnel cost of 827.8 billion Naira, capital expenditure exclusive of transfers at 3.96 trillion Naira. Special intervention recurrent amounting to 350 billion naira and special intervention capital of 7 billion naira. After plenary, 
Abdullah Sahidu appeared before parliamentary reporters to throw more light on the content of the report. He explains why 10 out of the 63 revenue generating agencies of government are recommended to be placed on the cost of collection. If we define it and we see that 5% or 10% of what they are collecting is enough to take care of their operations, you place them on that, of course it will come with an amendment of our laws. And by the time you do that, you'll be able to prudently manage your resources and the country will be better for it because they will be remitting more than what they are doing uh, as, as at now. In says revenue generation and not borrowing is Nigeria's problem. For a developing economy, I don't think we're doing too bad in terms of our borrowing. The emphasis, I think, should be on what we are generating. Are we generating enough? I think that's where we need to uh, lay our emphasis on. We need to show up our revenue generation level and also need to look at how prudent we manage our resources. The House also recommended a significant reduction in waivers and tax exemptions of corporate organizations to cushion the effect of the budget deficit. Joke Edsa, TVC News. Abuja. Benue Internal Revenue Service says the board will begin to collect taxes from telephone users, cable subscribers, and landowners from January 2023. Executive Chairman Mimi Adzapi Urubibi spoke at a joint state revenue committee meeting in Makodi, Mayowa Okwato, as details. This meeting includes the management of BIRS, 23 council chairmen, chairman of local government revenue committees, as well as representatives from the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission, Federal Road Safety Corps, and Bureau of Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs. The state government. This joint revenue committee follows the 2022 BIRS amended act that harmonized the revenue items to end multiple taxation in the state. It will help them to view their collection read time. It will also help to curb multiple and double taxation. The tax chief clarifies that with this amendment, tenement rates, property tax and ground rates would now be known as land use charge and the local government areas. The amendment of the law, one of the things the governor sought was to curb multiple taxation. Contributing, the special advisor, local government and chief Tansi affairs said that the harmonization and automation would help the council chairman know their exact revenue. I've raised two issues. One, about the inabilities of the local government setting revenue committee. Two, on the fact that this meeting is supposed to be held monthly so that the local governments will know exact figure that has gone out of their local government to the state post so that they will know the 40% the figure that at the end of the day that will come into the local government. Participants also shared lessons gotten from the meeting and how they plan to execute them. We were operating in blandness, total darkness. But uh, with this meeting, we are now informed. To be able to have that uh, detailed information concerning the issue of harmonization of tax in order to uh, make sure that our people comply in our various locations. The Joint State Revenue Committee Chair, the Joint State Revenue Committee meeting, which as the BIRS chairman as the chairman of the committee, is a creation of Section 92 and 93 of the Personal Income Tax Act 2004. Mayowa Okwato, TVC News, Makodi. To some politics now, barely a week after the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress traveled abroad, Bola Ahmed Tinubu is now back in the country from the United Kingdom. The presidential hopeful returned after days of intensive political consultations and meetings in London. Ashwaju Tinubu was received by the vice presidential candidate, Senator Kashim Shatima, DG APC Presidential Campaign Council Governor Simon Lalong and other chieftains of the ruling party, Ola Awako, has details. <laughs> APC presidential candidate Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu arrives at the Nnamdi Azikwe International Airport after a less than two weeks trip to the United Kingdom. He was welcomed by the APC vice presidential candidate Senator Kashim Shetima, DG APC Presidential Campaign Council, 
Governor Simon Lalong, former Governor of Edo State, Adam Soshiomole, and other chieftains of the ruling party. A crowd of supporters also thronged the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport to welcome Ashiwaju Tinubu, whom they say is the most preferred candidate on next year's presidential ballot. The APC presidential candidate says he is happy to be back home. The trip was very good. I enjoyed my you know, break and uh, I'm happy to be back to my fatherland. Ashiwaju Tinubu says his team will be performance driven and will improve the welfare of Nigerians and take it to an enviable position among the Committee of Nations. Nigeria should expect a very intelligent ability to think and perform. Nigeria should expect that the help they needed is here. The hope that is almost teetering is back and back actively. And that we hold every effort uh, to the country of patriotism, dedication, capacity, and ability to do the job. Not negative thinking. If it is uh, 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 assurance, we give Nigeria that we definitely will make a better country out of it all. The former governor of Lagos, whom many consider to be in a pole position to clinch victory at the presidential election, embarked on a short trip to the United Kingdom where he relaxed and held strategic meetings and consultations ahead of the campaigns leading to next year's elections. Ola Awakon, TVC News. Abuja. Now in Gombe State, the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Mohamed Jibrin Badi, says his party alone has the capacity to unlock the economic potential of the state, create jobs for the youth and cater for the well-being of the citizens. He also expressed confidence in the leadership of the former governor of the state, Ibrahim Dakwambu, and believes he will lead the party to victory at the polls next year. He said this when a huge crowd of supporters welcomed him at the Gombe International Airport as a sign of their commitment to ensuring he emerged victorious at the polls next year. The former governor also called on party faithful to close ranks and support candidates of the PDP at all levels and ensure they reclaim Gombe and return it to the path of growth and development. A two-day zonal level training on first aid skills, evaluation techniques and safe schools declaration has been held in Katsina to prepare students for eventualities. It is part of the state government's initiative to ensure school environments are friendlier and safer. TVC News correspondent Abdul Latif Yusuf has details. After two days of rigorous training, the students are displaying first aid skills to the admiration of guests and students who are here to show support for the participants. Amina Musa, who spoke on behalf of the beneficiaries, described how the training has made them better prepared for disaster management. Nigeria Red Cross um, ensuring the success of the project and also thanks to our school director this training session is organized by the Ministry of Education in collaboration with the Red Cross Society of Nigeria. First aid is immediate treatment given to who? Accident victim. You are giving him that before second aid. The second aid is rushing him to where? So take note. This training is designed to acquaint the students with the technicalities on how to apply first aid Take care of emergency situation. 6,000 participants were selected from schools in Katana Zone for the phase one training. Um, the objective of this training specifically is that within the period of students stay in school, whether boarding or day students, there are chances of maybe a request for first aid to ensure that the school is safe. So let me give you an example. Just ordinarily a student can fall through the window or miss a step and then be a casualty. 
injuries can also occur and then so they will need a first aid. So the objective of this training first is to empower them with the basic first aid skills so that they can be able to help themselves within the school if the need arise. The second reason is that in, in some part of the states there is still insecurity and then some of the schools now students go and they have apprehension. The training will also form the basis for the inauguration of safe school clubs across the state. Abdul Latif Yusuf, TVC News, Katana. Nigeria has recorded a drastic drop in the cases of sea piracy since President Muhammadu Buhari launched the Deep Blue Project in June last year. That's according to the Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Bashir Jamo, who said 34 incidents of piracy were recorded last year with no reported cases of attack on vessels. The Namasa Director General gave an update on the activities of the agency and how it has effectively enhanced the safety of the Gulf of Guinea. He spoke to journalists at the 53rd session of the State House Press Briefing organized by the Presidential Communications team. From the first quarter to date, we have never recorded one single accident or incident in our own territorial waters in terms of piracy attack from last quarter of 2021 to date, over a year now, no single attack in our own territorial water. <laughs> this led to the cancellation of the stigma placed on Nigeria as the most dangerous water and removed from the piracy list in March 2022. From March 2022, Nigeria has been removed from the piracy list for the first time in history. Now, operatives of the Oyo State Police Command have arrested three suspects in connection with illegal possession of 350 pieces of live cartridges. The police paraded the suspects at the police headquarters in Eleyele, uh, Ibadan, the Oyo State capital. The command's public relations officer, Adewale Oshifeso, disclosed that the suspects were arrested in Ishain area of the state and are specialized in selling ammunition to criminal groups in the Axis. He also, com and, uh, he also commended nabbed four suspects uh, who specialized in dispossessing innocent residents of Ugumosho of their tricycles. ...members of the criminal syndicates specialized in illegal importation and supply of ammunition, that is cartridges, um, to some notorious armed robbery and kidnapping syndicate, terrorizing unsuspecting members of the public in different parts of Oyo State and neighboring states, were cited at their hideout in a same town, Oyo State. Our men swung into action, and upon um, the action, we were able to, of course, apprehend three suspects. In other news, the youth wing of Napsat Islamic Society has asked the Nigerian government and individuals to create an enabling environment for youth to thrive. It believes this will enable Nigeria to retain a considerable number of its professionals who seek greener pastures outside the country. Abid Alawal has details. Many Nigerian skilled workers are migrating to bigger Western economies, particularly Canada, the United States and the United Kingdom. Recent UK visa laws have also made it easy for many Nigerians to migrate to the United Kingdom with dependents. The Yoruba word Jakpa, which means to run away quickly from a bad situation, has become a popular word among many middle-aged and young Nigerians. A brain drain occurs if migrants are disproportionately compromised of highly skilled workers from the source country, which is the case with Nigeria. This gathering of young Nigerians from Natsfat Islamic Society believes the current state of the Nigerian economy, characterized by high inflation, poor growth, forex devaluation, worsening insecurity, are major factors influencing the decision of many Nigerians to flee the country. While moving out of Nigeria is not an issue, but the Japa syndrome thing that you are going and you are gone forever is what we want to discourage among our youth. It's fine you go out, acquire more talent, acquire more skills, make more money, and come back to invest in your country. But in a situation whereby you have made up your mind that you are going and you are not coming back to this country, it's a very, very wrong notion. The problem is that how do they travel? That's the problem. If they are travel properly, 
with their fingerprint, they will know. But somebody that jacked through an illegal route, it will be difficult to know. We will continue to plead with them that you can still travel legally without going through that stress. Relevant authorities can leverage the remittances and utilize the diaspora for productive investment. Nigerians in the diaspora remit funds to friends and families at home for hopkeep and investment purposes. This pool of foreign exchange can serve to boost the country's forex earnings. The development plans of governments are being skewed by population increase. So what do we need to do is that all of us should come together and support one another. All hands need to be on deck. Government, private sector, faith-based organizations come together and find ways to support young people. That said, emigration is not always totally bad news for the source country. There may be some positive effect, such as higher wages and higher employment rate for those left behind. Habib Alawal, TVC News, Abuja. And news just reaching us say that uh, the Court of Appeal that sat in the nation's capital has granted the Academic Staff Union of Universities conditional leave to appeal the ruling of the National Industrial Court on the 21st of September, ordering lecturers to end the strike and go back to the classroom. Justice Hama Barka, who led the three-man panel, granted leave on the condition that ASU must obey the order of the interlocutory injunction by the lower court immediately. Justice Biobele George Will, a member of the panel, also ordered that the leave granted can only stand if ASU obeys the interlocutory order of the lower court. Justice George Will also stated that in a situation where the orders of the lower court aren't obeyed, the court will withdraw the leave granted ASU to appeal the interlocutory injunction orders by the NIC. ASU has been given seven days to file its appeal and immediately obey the orders of the lower court. We'll bring you more details in our subsequent bulletin.